Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to turn the microphone over to uh, Mr. Steve Kremer and uh, Jordan West from the NASA Wallops Flight Facility. They have something to uh, let everybody know. And I need the Sandra Ann one more time back up to the registration table. Sandra Ann. Welcome everybody. Thanks very much for uh, giving us a little bit of time to talk to you tonight. Um, wanted to let you know that uh, Hey guys, we're going to start the captain's meeting now, if you could quiet down. This gentleman's going to talk about the launch tonight, tomorrow. You guys all want to hear this so you know where to fish. Alright, hold on a second. Thanks very much. Um, again, my name is Steve Creamer. I'm the uh, head of the Wallops Launch Range. I really appreciate you giving us a little bit of time to talk to you tonight. Um, a little bit about what we're doing tomorrow is uh, something we're very proud of and we want to work with you all to hopefully coordinate a better event not only for you all but for us. Uh, the Antares rocket is going to launch at about, if we launch on Saturday, at about 1.15 in the afternoon. Uh, Mr. Jordan West is going to talk to you a little bit about if you have any questions about where the specific areas that we have concerns of. But this rocket that's launching on Saturday is carrying a lot of stuff, important stuff up to the International Space Station. Um, as you know, astronauts from multiple countries, including our own, uh, require uh, cargo to be taken up to them very regularly. A lot of these things are to keep a uh, safe uh, environment on the space station itself. But some of the more important things that we carry up, these folks are on the space station for six months or more at a time. And what we can carry up to them from their families down here on our great planet uh, is just as important to them. So we want to provide them an opportunity. And our launch window on Saturday is only five minutes long. We can't wait to do that. So we can't wait for boats to exit. Um, and we can't wait for things to happen just right. We only have a five minute window and that's not very much. And this is a $1.8 billion program that NASA has. And when we slip a day because of, for any reason, whether it's weather or whether it's boats in our hazard area or whether it's aircraft, um, you know, it costs us about a half a million dollars. We know you guys, and one, one thing I've learned tonight is that um, what you guys do to prepare for what you have coming on this weekend um, is giving me some ideas of maybe what we need to do. I don't know if I could get away with the beer, but uh, you guys have a lot of fun to prepare for what you're getting ready to do this weekend. We have a lot of work, folks back at Wallops preparing for what we're getting ready to do this weekend. And we, as Jordan will tell you, we need a slight bit of cooperation. I think it's going to be very minimal impact to anything you're doing. And if you give us about five minutes to get this thing out of wallops, you're going to have one heck of a show that you'll be able to watch out there on the water too. So again, I appreciate it very much, uh, us, you, know, you giving us the time. And I want to turn it over to Mr. Jordan West to go over a little bit about the uh, hazard areas that we're talking about. Yeah, thank you, Steve. Uh, the first thing I really wanted to point out to you guys is that our first priority is to keep everyone out there safe. Uh, there's a lot of boats that are going to be out there, and the rockets that we're, that we're launching are designed to drop very large segments out in the ocean in a lot of the popular areas that are fi being fished. So our first priority is to keep you guys safe from any of the debris that's going to be coming down as it's designed to. Um, the second thing is that we're definitely not trying to prevent any type of fishing or impede this uh, tournament in any way. We're going to keep all the impacts very, very minimally. The good news is, is that the Washington Canyon, you guys are green to go. You guys can fish all you want in the area there. We've got a small hazard area that extends beyond the Washington Canyon and the Norfolk Canyon. So if you guys are, anybody's traveling really far south or inside towards like uh, the Lumpy Bottom area, if the Lumpy Bottom area is right in the heart of our hazard area. It's, it's a, a bad, bad spot to be. Um, but I definitely wanted to stress the fact that we're, we're, we're trying to, we're trying to keep everybody safe on this mission. And uh, to reiterate on Steve's point, is like this, this, is a, this is not a science mission you know, that, that our local wallops here is just trying to launch. This is a really critical resupply mission that astronauts that are currently in space that are depending on. So a little cooperation goes a long way. 
Um, as far as during the tournament, in case anyone hasn't heard, our, our Friday schedule has slipped to Saturday. So tomorrow there will be no launch operations. We'll, we'll, we'll be, there'll be no communications out on the water, so you guys will have a free and clear day to have fun. Um, on Saturday we're going to pick it up. Uh, I'm going to be on, on uh, the radio a lot. You guys, if you guys are going to be monitoring Channel 16 and Channel 12, 12, Channel 12 will be conducting most of our surveillance operations. You're going to hear a lot of what's going on. You're going to hear a t us talking to an awful lot of boats. It's a really busy time of year, as you guys know, and it's, it makes it very challenging for us. So a little cooperation goes a really long ways. So we're willing to work with a lot of the boats. A lot of people think that we're just out there to really stop you guys from fishing. But if you guys are just to be able to communicate with me a little bit or communicate with the, uh, the Navy aircraft that we have out, the Coast Guard boats, the state police boats, if you just talk to us, we are actually able to work with you a lot. And if you just state your intentions and figure out where you're trying to be, a lot of times we can just work with you and allow you to go go on to your destination. Um, and beyond that, uh, I just ask you guys, just if, if you guys are monitoring 16 and uh, Channel 12, just talk to us. If we if we come up on the comms and, and ask you for a little bit of information, just be friendly. We're going to be very respectful and friendly back. And. Uh, other than that, you guys, uh, I wish you all the luck. Please be safe and, uh, and tight lines tomorrow. Thank you, Jordan and Steve. Appreciate the heads up on the launch. Welcome to the 27th Annual Ocean City Tuna Tournament. Happy to see uh, so many familiar faces out here. I want to let you know that uh, we have 80, 80 boats entered in the tournament this year. And uh, quite frankly, that's, that's a little down from last year, which was 85. That's the bad news. The good news is the payout is up over $50,000. We're paying out $529,000 in this tournament. A couple quick thank yous uh, before we get started with the rules. Thank you to Rolf Kodowski and Jennifer Blunt for all their work putting this together. A big round of applause for them, please the entire staff here at the Pitching Center. Thank you to our sponsors, our title sponsor, Under Armour. Under Armour has gone way out for, for everything we need. Uh, put up shirts, supplies, bags. A big thank you to Under Armour. Please support them if you get the opportunity. Alban Caterpillar. Chris Carr and Alban Caterpillar, your local Caterpillar dealer. Alban's been with us for a number of years. They're an awesome sponsor. Blue Water Yacht Sales. Doug and Scott here are the local guys for Blue Water. Viking Yachts, Cabo and Regulator, they represent them all. Costa Sunglasses. Costa, once again, they've been with this tournament, I believe, since the beginning. Thank you to Costa. Avon Dixon Insurance. Jay Dayton's here from Avon Dixon. If you get a chance, give them an opportunity to earn your business. North Bay Marina. Contender Boats and Pioneer Boats. They've got a couple of those boats on display. Thank you to North Bay. Cato Gas and Oil. Jarrett Bay Boat Works. Alliance Boat Sales. Thank you to Alliance. I think they've got a brokerage boat up by the scales. The Mid-Atlantic Tournament, formerly known as the Mid-Atlantic 500,000. And the South Jersey Yacht Sales. Park Place Jewelers, it's here. I'll give you an opportunity to spend your winnings with Park Place. Hooked on OC, anytime during the week you may see Dave and his crew filming. If you do not want to be filmed, if you're fishing with your niece, please let Dave know that he is not to film you or take photographs of you. Uh, Tito's Handmade Vodka, thank you to Tito's, they're new for this year. All right, now moving right into the rules for the tournament. I'm going to hit the highlights. If you have any specific questions, you're welcome to answer, or we will be available after the captain's meeting to follow up on any technical stuff. This is a fish two out of three day tournament. Captain's choice. Your lay day form must be turned in in person at the Ocean City Bait and Tackle Shop right here, no later than 10 a.m. on that day. You can fish your lay day. You turn in your lay day form the night before, you can go fishing. Departure for the fish day. You may depart at 12.01 on your fish day. 
Fishing hours are 7.30 to 3. So even though you can depart at 12.01, lines in the water at 7.30, lines out at 3 o'clock. Should you have a fish hooked up at 3 o'clock, notify another tournament boat on the radio. You may fight that fish until boated or lost. Either way, the fish needs to make it to our scales by the time the scales close. Scales close here at 7.30 on Friday and Saturday, 7 o'clock on Sunday. You do not need to come screaming into the marina. Kale will be at the Ocean City Junction buoy. That is where you need to be by the scale closure. You will have plenty of time to get to the scale once you make it to that point. Uh, quick clarity on level F. Level S, I believe, is funded with $184,000 right now. I think there's 41 boats in that Calcutta. Level F is a standalone Calcutta. In this tournament, you can win one side or the other, heavy fish or most weight, but not both. Level F is the exception to that. There is a scenario that would allow a boat to win level F and win most pounds, but not place in the single fish otherwise if there were boats that were not in that Calcutta above them. Stringer weight. Um, in, in order to make it a little more convenient for everybody, for several years now, we've opened up the scales at sunset for stringer weight only. The intent for that is to prevent you guys from having to wait in line for an extended period to weigh a couple of fish that may not uh, make a difference in that day's fishing, but could make a difference in your overall weight. So please do not present trophy fish, which would be your single largest fish, Dolphin, lady, or junior angler, all those fish need to come here. And with 80 boats fishing, we can handle the traffic here without a problem. We started to run into trouble when we were up in the 115 range, so we'll, we'll be fine with that. Those fish may be weighed on Friday and Saturday, stringer weighed at sunset, Friday and Saturday only. Sunday, all fish weighed here at the fishing center on Sunday. Range of the tournament, 100 mile range from the Ocean City Junction buoy. Several no's in the tournament here. No live baiting, no chumming, no chunking. It's a trolling tournament. No green sticks allowed. Nothing off the green sticks. Not using it as an outrigger or nothing. Nothing off the green sticks. No danglers, no wire line. Leader length. Leader lengths at the captain's discretion. There is no restriction on the leader length. It's your call how long the leader you want to put out. We're fishing eight lines and two teasers in this tournament. Uh, the one thing that I want to clarify, if you're fishing a downrigger or a planer or your Z-wing with a release clip, that's one line. You have one hook in the line, you're fishing with a release clip, that's one line. Up to six anglers on each boat can fish the tournament, and a mate or a captain may be an angler. Tournament channel. Tournament channel is 19. One nine is the tournament channel. Uh, fighting the fish. Anglers may fight the fish from a rod holder. Um, it may occur during multiple hookups, but we aren't going to distinguish between a single hookup or multiple hookup. They may fight the fish from a rod holder. And a hook in hand is allowed. If you get hit on the bridge rod, you can hand the rod down. Once the angler has the rod, it's his until the fish is boated or lost. Uh, tuna, there's a 30 pound minimum on all tuna. So to make the scales for stringer weight or for single fish, the fish has to weigh, each single fish has to weigh at least 30 pounds. The dolphin minimum is 20 pounds. Um, to let you guys know, any of you that weren't aware of it, there was a preload on the Dolphin from last year of almost $12,000, which, rough math in my head, it puts the payout on one Dolphin to somewhere in the neighborhood of $22,000. 20 pounds is the minimum weight on the Dolphin. Under 40 Calcutta, we have a bunch of boats in the under 40 Calcutta. Your boat needs to be manufacturer length of 39 feet, 11 inches or less to be in that Calcutta. If there's a problem with that, please let us know tonight. We will refund your money on the under 40. We don't want any boats competing in that that are 40 feet or above. It's 39, 11 or less. 
As for permits, the only thing that you will need to present to us would be an HMS permit to offload bluefin tuna and to gain your tag from us. Anything beyond that as far as a Maryland fishing license or angler license or anything like that, we're not asking for, we're not an enforcement agency. You do not need to present that to us. That's not to say that another agency isn't gonna request it, but we will not. Um, did I miss anything, Rolf? Oh yeah, uh, trucked in fish. For anybody that's not fishing out of the fishing center, you're welcome to truck your fish over. When you arrive at the fishing center, there'll be an attendant up at that lot. If the lot is full, just let him know that you have a fish to weigh. He'll send you straight down to the back of the building where the fish cleaning station's been relocated. You can wheelbarrow that fish right up to the scales right there. So trucked in fish are fine. Do we have any other questions or anything before we wrap this up? Yes, sir. Jay hooks are fine. That's that. That's why we eliminated billfish from this altogether. Is we're we're not targeting billfish. You can fish with jay hooks. Uh, uh, maximum line weight on any line. Line. There is no maximum. There is no. Right. Now to clear out the downrigger, you're fishing a downrigger with a release clip and one, one bait on it, that's one line. That's one line. Hours, hours again? Fishing hours. Fishing hours again? 7.30 to 3 are the fishing hours. Lines in, 7.30 out at 3. One last thing Luke brought up, and I'm not sure how I missed it. Very, very important. Charter boat captains especially. We are fishing bluefin regs for recreational fishing. That's 127 to 47, 147 to 73. Charter boats cannot boat or keep the second fish. Yeah, to repeat it, we're fishing recreational regs on the bluefin. So you, charter boats are keep fishing recreational regs. You cannot keep the second fish. You, the third, uh, that's confusing. You can't, you, you can only keep two fish, 127 to 47, 147 to 73. Yeah, dredge is a teaser. We're, we're here for an hour or so. If anybody else has any additional questions, they're welcome to come up and ask them. Good luck to everybody. Hope to see you at the scales and tight lines.